Welcome back. Patrice Colors is with us. She's one of the three founders of the Black Lives Matter movement, all of whom were honored at a dinner last night for Glamour Magazine's Women of the Year Awards. Watch. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and support each other. We, we must, must love each other and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Turn up, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you Quite so an much. honor. Thank you very much. I, I was just uh, sort of teasing you a moment ago. Yeah. You know, you, you had things on your mind. You wanted to get certain things done. And then suddenly you step into the vortex of history. Yes. And suddenly you came up, hashtag Black Lives Matter. Yes. Certain things stick and certain things don't. How surprised, how shocked were you that this became so important? The hashtag. Yes. I mean, when we created the hashtag, I literally went to social media and said, myself and my good friend Alicia Garza have created this hashtag, and we hope that it goes beyond um, more than we can ever imagine. And it has. <laughs> and I think it's incredible. It also is a sign of how much people need this at this current moment in history. And, you know, 30 years after the civil rights movement, when we th would think that so much has changed, um, obviously we've had great gains, but we've, we've also had great losses. Also a sign of the times. I mean, this happened with social media. Yes. The mere fact that there is a hashtag and the movement began because of that. Uh, watching what has come about, what, what are your thoughts with the protests and so on and so forth? I mean, over the last three years, many of us uh, here in Los Angeles, across the country and across the world have been chanting Black Lives Matter, have been in the streets, have been saying, you know, we have to stop killing black folks. We have to hold law enforcement accountable. And after uh, this last election, uh, I think many of us feel uh, the urgency of now and the urgency of of organizing our communities and really shaping a new America. We all deserve democracy. We all deserve to live in a place where we feel safe. Well, you know, of course, controversy surrounds you wherever you go and, and this issue and there's all lives matter, blue lives matter, yes. et cetera. But we're also living in a time where people uh, are so polarized mm -hmm. that we don't want to understand each other. Yes. I, you know, m more people are more comfortable being angry with you than listening to you. Yes. How, how do you react to that? I mean, I think um, in our movement you see uh, groups of people really trying to work together. Um, and the Black Lives Matter movement, we always say the movement isn't just about black people. It's a conversation about black people, but we're asking everybody to join in that conversation. And we think we need everyone involved in this really brilliant and vibrant and creative movement. And when people say, well, this is the next generation. You have moved the traditional civil rights leaders aside, the Jesse Jacksons, mm -hmm. the Sharptons, et cetera. What's your reaction to that? I think um, I'm really grateful for the work of Reverend Al Sharpton and Reverend Jesse Jackson. They uh, are part of a foundation for our work. And I also think that it's so important that a new generation, especially as you've seen it, it's mostly black women who are at the forefront, who are changing um, the face of America. Steve just mentioned it, uh, but if you could go back for a moment. Um, I know there's been some controversy in the other hashtags that have come about. Mm -hmm. um, the hashtag All Lives Matter, mm -hmm. hashtag Blue Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. um, the criticism has been it takes away from your hashtag. Yes. What's your response to that? Yeah, I think uh, we wouldn't need Black Lives Matter if All Lives Mattered. Uh, I think part of uh, the pushback that we try to challenge people and when they use All Lives Matter, um, you know, there's this beautiful analogy, which is you show up to a neighborhood and there's a burning, ha there's houses on the block and one is burning. You don't say all houses matter. You deal with the house that is burning. Um, there's a national crisis in the black community right now. Um, you know, the argument is that every 28 hours, black people are killed by a law enforcement, a vigilante, or a security guard. Um, and some of the records are now saying it's every 16 hours. So we have to deal with the emergency first. And when we deal with the emergency, we can deal with everything else. 
You grew up here. You're a local kid. I am. <laughs> uh, you grew up in what would, uh, not politically even necessarily, but conservative circumstances, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Don't be flamboyant. Don't mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that now with your family? How does that work out? Um, in the last, you know, 15 years I've been doing this. I'm 33. I've been doing this work since I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. um, of my mother, of course, at first was like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what is, what do you do? You knock on people's doors and tell them to sign petitions. And mm -hmm. it was very abstract for her. But when everything changed is when my um, older brother was, um, he uh, had caught a case here in LA County. And he uh, actually suffers from schizoaffective disorder. And he was in the middle of an episode. He wasn't taking his medicine. And he was pulled over by poli police. And they were trying to give him a life sentence. And um, my community rallied, and we were able to get fundraise ten thousand dollars to give him a private attorney. And uh, he didn't get that life sentence; instead, he got eight years in prison. Uh, he should have received treatment, a mental health treatment, um, and that's a whole nother conversation we could talk about. But my mother recognized, oh, this is what you do: mm -hmm. you help those who are at the margins, you support communities who um, don't have the support and don't have the resources. And our family happened to be one of those community members. You're an optimist or a pessimist? I'm an optimist. <laughs> I really am. I really, you know, I cried after the election. I was not the, that was not the outcome I wanted. But a couple days later, I sort of said, okay, what do we need to do to make sure that our communities are get, gonna get the things that they need to get? What about that moment when uh, President Obama and Trump met? Was that encouraging or did it matter? Not yet. It doesn't matter yet. I think we need to, we need to be careful. You know, uh, President-elect uh, Trump really ran on a platform of hate. We saw it at every, every moment. You know, many of our protesters would protest his rallies and they were physically and verbally abused in those rallies. But you, you understand half of America who voted for him didn't see it as a platform of hate at all. They would yep. disagree with you. Yes, and there's a beautiful, I think, tweet out there that said something like, you know, people, some, peop some of the people who didn't vote for Trump were not racist, but racism was um, okay to be negotiated. And so I think that's the problem. Um, we are too easily negotiating with hate um, instead of saying we need to be on the right side of history. Okay. The conversation <laughs> obviously continues. <laughs> it's good to see you, Patrice. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Congratulations you on your reward. You yes. All right. Uh, there were other women honored.